Hey guys, so uh, yes, it's still July 5th or 6th or whatever day it was we were up looking at the barley. So I did drive down here to show you guys some mustard. So like canola, it looks very similar. Mustard, canola. If you're just driving by on the road doing 50 mile an hour or however fast you might be going, uh, you might not be able to tell the difference unless you know what you're really looking for. So the difference, there's a few. This stuff here is uh, brown mustard. You can also grow yellow mustard and you can also grow oriental mustard. But whether you grow any of those three, it's still gonna look like this. It's still gonna look green and it's gonna bloom yellow and it will look like canola. Doesn't matter if you go brown, oriental or yellow. Okay? Okay. So, let's talk about brown mustard a little bit. We've always grown mustard all for years and years and years, and then we switched into canola, and then realized that, well, we're struggling growing canola down here because we barely get enough rain, and mustard's a little bit hardier, and can, seems like it takes the little drier conditions a little bit better. But, Unlike your different types and varieties of canola, you have a lot more weed options with that, where mustard you do not. So let's talk about that. So the canola up north on the north farm, I grew two different types. You guys already know that. You guys know that I grew in vigor. So you can put down Liberty. It's basically like a burn down, kind of like an acid, just burns it down. It doesn't actually kill it to the root. The other stuff is uh, uh, Corteva, it's a Bravant canola seed uh, it's roundup ready so basically I just go out with roundup and you can throw in a group one grassy chemical as well to help it out and uh, those two chemicals will kill it to the root but it will take 10 days two weeks probably two weeks to do that so if you have a really bad infestation you're like oh man I need this to die right now like right now uh, that's it's not going to die right now. It's going to take like two weeks. Where Liberty, like that acid, like burn down chemical, um, that goes quick, like three days pretty much. It's burnt right down. So, uh, and then it's no longer competition to your canola. But that's canola. This is brown mustard. So, what are our weed, um, what are our chemicals, I should say, for our weeds in brown mustard? that's really simple you don't have any <laughs> uh, I shouldn't say that you have group one so group one you can go out and you can kill some grassy weeds such as your like your wild oats your your volunteer cereal crops you might have coming back uh, depending on what kind of combines you run John Deere combines you probably have some volunteer cereals coming out there <laughs> joking I like to anyway um or maybe you got your uh, some bromes foxtail you know stuff like that you can you can spray that out but what you can't really spray out is broadleafs. This is a broadleaf crop. It's a brassica family. You can't really spray broadleafs out. I think there is some mustard toss and go is the chemical that we call it. I can't remember the active because I never use it. But uh, you could knock out some stinkweeds, I think, which is not really a big problem unless your stinkweed gets really tall and your mustard has a really short crop because stinkweed seed is really small kind of like mustard seed and you're not allowed a lot of stinkweed seed in your mustard so i guess there is that one option but we don't use it it seems to me seems to me there is some uh pulse recropping issues with that so you also got to remember well you know can i seed pulses the year after maybe i want to put some lentils into this or something you know what i mean so anyways now let's talk about gophers you guys know that we have gophers a gopher will go seven miles to get to a canola field or a barley field. I swear, they'll go seven miles. They'll just be trucking away from home. They're like, yeah, they'll call home and say, hey, I'm almost there. And then finally, when they get there, they'll call all their friends. They will mow canola and barley right off. We'll lose whole fields because they love that stuff so much. I know it's a serious problem. And yes, I know, control your gophers, we try. But when you're overrun with them, they're hard to kill. And yes, you can put bait stations out. Yes, you can. You can put bait stations out to kill them. But why do they want to eat dry grain when they can have very luscious green barley or lush green canola? Why do you want to eat bread when you could have 
steak and potatoes. You know what I'm saying? So anyways, mustard is a little bitter. You know, if you if you open up a uh, when when this stuff is like fully matured and you uh, want to chew on some mustard seeds, it's a little spicy. It's a little spicy. So uh, gophers really don't like that. So if you have a really gopher infested field like this field, like remember I did a video out here. I got a sorry guys, my arm's tired. I did a video out here um, last year about all the gopher. I think I can't remember what I titled it. Ground rats or I don't know. Dirt rats, I don't know, because gophers to us are rats like in New York City, right? Or in any city for that matter. Uh, they are a menace to the ground, they carry diseases, and uh, they do a lot of damage. But they don't really like mustard. It's a little spicy and bitter to them. So they will trek across the road to the neighbor's wheat field and chew on his before they really start chewing on mustard. So that's, that's a benefit, that's a big pro. Now let's get to some obvious questions and I'll keep filling you in. You're like, Mike, why do we have some blooming mustard, but then mustard roads that are really short that aren't blooming? That's actually a really good question. So this mustard is bolting. So basically it, you know, they, they, they go cotyledon stage, then they get cabbage stage, and then they bolt them, which means they go up, okay? So these are all bolting. The reason why is because some of these rows, like this row, it germinated after I seeded it. But this row and this row and kind of all in here, as you can see, there's not very many yellow flowers on it, hence all out there, there's lots of yellow flowers. All that tells you is you have two stage mustard. Now, is that common? Absolutely, in dry seeding conditions, it's very common. Uh, you can have that in canola as well. Heck, we had that in our cereals, and it's, it's less common in cereals because you can seed deeper. So cereals, you can seed like up to like, I think two inches deep. We were like inch and three quarters or something. Um, so normally you can find some mustard because the goal of seeding is to get it into some moisture. Did I say mustard? You can find some mustard. <laughs> anyway, you can find moisture. You want to seed into moisture, but a mustard or an oil seed you're only seeding like maybe a half inch up to an inch deep and uh well that whole inch of seeding our soil an inch deep uh was completely dried out so we were seeding this mustard into dry conditions okay so obviously some found moisture when we seeded it and if we look this way lots didn't so it's kind of patchy now will it catch up really good question yes it will um, it's funny how that can happen sometimes. They will, like look at this. Look at this, look at this, look at this. This mustard plant germinated obviously right away. And look at all these ones that did not because they're not, there's no flowers on them yet. This one, and then all of his friends didn't. Now, every row is coming now because we've been tagging some of these late rains like you know. So it is all gonna come in. It might be a little, it might be a little uh, too stagey come harvest, but because um, like this one here is fully flowering, and this guy and like these little guys, well, they're just nicely getting going, right? Here's a prime example: flower, 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 little plants, flower. Yeah, you guys get the idea. It's not optimum, it isn't, but there's absolutely nothing you can do about it, and that's part of farming. So every farmer is trying to adapt to this, to the conditions which they're seeding into. So there's a phrase of chasing moisture. That's a thing, you know, when you're seeding, you're trying to chase moisture. How deep do you chase it? If the moisture is an inch and a half to an inch and three quarters deep, do you dare seed your, what the heck happened here? Not exactly sure, but uh, sometimes it's fertilizer spills or loadouts, but anyways, do you dare chase that moisture or do you lay it on top? We don't lay anything on top. I did up north because you know you're gonna get a rain. Rains are guaranteed. But down here, they're not. So laying it on top, laying it on top means, means you're seeding super shallow, like quarter inch to a half inch deep. Seeding normal would be to that half inch deep to one inch deep, I'm talking oil seeds. Chasing moisture, you're chasing. That means you're risking it for the biscuits. I guess you could also say laying it on top is risking it for the biscuits, but 
you're gonna go to an inch and a quarter deep and boy I don't know if I'd go much deeper than that with an oil seed because it just won't come up you're not gonna have to worry about any moisture because your crop isn't gonna push through maybe you lose 50% of your stand your seed will die in the ground because it cannot punch through that much dirt if you ever get a pounding rain and bake the top you're done you want to just start reseeding so anyways now that you guys know the definitions of chasing moisture and uh, laying her on top this was just seeded at a normal depth and you just hope for a rain so right beautiful this is a perfect example this is all nicely coming it's just past cabbage and starting to bolt this obviously did not this all this green did not germinate uh, where the yellow did right right okay so um, we've talked about you can't really spray weeds out so that means what are your options well that's a really good question um, remember last year we were edging yes it's a chemical that we put down in the fall and uh, so you're you're limited to residual type chemicals not necessarily it's something that you spray on but it's something that you can either spread on it's a granular or you can spray on with a liquid you can either do it in the fall or you can do it in the spring we actually did both we we put down some I think it was edge here in the fall and then uh, we put some authority in front of it uh, also a residual uh, in the in the spring so I'm really happy I haven't even seen a single weed now us farmers we like to keep our fields clean because we live off them but not to have any weeds is pretty good so and of course not very often are you doubling up on your residuals you got to be careful about doing that because doubling up on your residuals can definitely cause problems but I'm really happy that it is very clean out here now can it get disease absolutely you can get you can get sclerotinia uh, flea beetles can take it um, this stuff was treated uh, with insecticide for flea beetle chewing which would be long gone by now I think that only buys you like two weeks after you germinate it which is a, a pretty important two weeks because normally you're flat out trying to seed and start your crop spraying on your wheat and cereal so the last thing you want to worry about oh is those flea beetles chewing down on my mustard I guarantee you they are oh I found a weed you know what that is can anyone uh, can anyone guess that puppy well if you guess Canada thistle you're wrong if you guessed kosher weed, you're also wrong. But if you guessed Russian thistle, you're 100% correct. Now, you guys know that uh, Russian thistle and kosher weed are our biggest nemesis down here. And uh, you already know that we cannot spray for that. So the authority that we would have put down is not going to do anything with this. So it would be on that edge that we put down in the last fall and I can't remember the actives guys I should just speak active so that way you guys all know what I'm talking about I should just memorize those but I can never memorize them uh, remember them sorry this Russian thistle he's a little wounded so see how he's kind of kinked see how see how that little Russian thistle there is kinked that tells you that the edge that we put down last fall is having a certain amount of activity on it because Russian thistle, I think, is suppression. That looks suppression, okay? This little guy here is another little guy. He's also wounded, okay? So will they amount to anything? Probably not. That guy, he busted through. He busted through like Godzilla. He's punching through. You're not stopping him. He will be a full-size Russian thistle uh, come harvest time, okay? Oh, what do we got over here? I knew there was weeds. It was too good to be true. This is buckwheat, okay? I probably shouldn't give it away. I should have made you guys guess. But anyways, buckwheat um, is not really a big deal for us down here, but it can be. This buckwheat is very viney, so it grows on the ground like this. It can get very big like this. And uh, if you have a chisel plow, a cultivator, or whatever it might be, it will drag on your shanks and cause a lot of plugging issues. But uh, this little guy also looks wounded. Let's see if I can zoom in on him, him a little bit here. You can tell if there's curling of the leaves, abnormal growth, and he is definitely wounded. So we look at that leaf. We know that there is activity on these, which is obviously why they're far and few between. So that's really good. So. 
yeah i'm trying to think oh there is more russian thistle we're gonna see some russian thistle out here you guys i knew i should have shut my trap and not have said anything i shouldn't have said anything i knew it <laughs> oh man but anyways i knew that this particular field is was bad for russian thistle so uh and I knew if you're if it's gonna punch through, if it's gonna go through your granular, that you fall applied. And I applied it heavy because I always apply everything on the heavy side. Even increased my seeding rate on the mustard here to try to run good competition with it, anticipating push through. We're gonna find some that got pushed through, and that's it is what it is. Obviously, in a perfect realm, perfect realm, perfect world. I can't even talk anymore. Um, you have perfectly clean fields, but that's impossible. It's really hard to have perfectly clean fields because you're always there's always something that would come up. Also, if your mustard or canola would have got going right off the go and cabbaged, when they cabbage, it basically covers the ground, right? So it shades it from the sun. Also really good against weed competition. But this stuff is kind of going late, so the weeds got off to a start early and they beat the mustard up. I don't even know where I'm going. I gotta find my truck here. So anyways, that's it in a nutshell. That's brown mustard or oriental or yellow. Also, I should note, I should note that um, you will notice the different colors of mustard when it's harvest time, okay? So when I'm combining this brown mustard, it's gonna look very similar to, to canola. It's gonna be black and uh, yellow is gonna look kind of a yellowy color. And oriental is going to be more of a well like you kind of split the difference <laughs> it's got its own unique color anyways you guys kind of get the idea as far as crop what do you think it's going to yield my guy actually really don't know it's so hard to say like what's the rest of july going to do is it going to get hot and windy on us you know right now this mustard is most susceptible it's it's flowering you can't take much heat right now um, as you can see that there's some hilltops that are a little patchy oh, I can't zoom in that far sorry about the wind you guys it's always windy around here the crop isn't that bad to be honest it's going to catch up it's going to look better once all this other stuff starts flowering fills in a little bit I don't know mustard doesn't yield as high as canola so if you had say a 30 bushel canola crop down here maybe you would have a 17 bushel mustard crop or something so uh, take that with a grain of salt obviously there's a lot of factors that can contribute into that but anyways now you've seen brown mustard basically it looks like canola oh how can you tell the difference very good question you it's really hard to tell the difference but the leaves on brown mustard are more of a lime light green like they look like they're lacking nutrients right it looks like it's like oh it's kind of like a weird light green uh where canola it's a dark green okay it's dark green typically mustard it's more bally on the top so you got this uh mustard plant whoa whoa easy here that's kind of like this and it's kind of like these little balls right like that where canola i guess there's probably different varieties too, but the ones, the varieties that I'm used to growing, um, they will flower farther down the stem. So you can have canola that's flowering like this. So it's all flowers down the stem versus the ball on top. Those are two giveaways that I would notice for right off the bat. Um, I'm pretty sure there's something with the leaves. Uh, they're edgier. They're, let's see if we can, pretty sure there's something with the leaves. Someone told me one time, but now I can't remember. So I'm sure there's other ones too. But that's how I know it. And uh, yeah. And Mike, can you act, can you cross mustard and canola? No, you cannot. That is a big no-go. If you want to ruin uh, 50,000 bushels of mustard or canola in a bin, just sprinkle a few kernels of one or the other in it. That would do it. So uh, yes, there is very, 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 very small amount that you could ever mix. It's not a... If you want to make feed it's a good way to do it okay guys you guys have yourself an awesome one and i'll catch you on the flipper adios amigos